Tennessee. From the bright lights of Broadway to the picturesque Smokies, Volunteer State has something for nearly everyone. If you're into good food and good music, this just may be the place for you. But before you get swept away by the rolling hillsides and southern charm, listen up, because today we're talking about the places you don't want to live here. Now, of course, your idea of bad and my idea of bad are going to be different things, right? But I think we can all agree that places where there's high crime and poverty and where the schools are bad and where home values are bad are going to be terrible places to live. And plus, I got the opinion of you Tennessee people, you guys all have strong opinions on the places in your state that are bad places to live too. And no, Nashville is not on here, even though with all the young people moving in and the traffic and the homeless, that, that place is starting to get bad, which is sad. So while Dolly Parton sang a song about working nine to five, a lot of these places aren't working at all. Let's see where the worst places in Tennessee are to live. We're going to start our journey on the worst places to live in Tennessee with a stop at Chattanooga. What? Chattanooga? This place has a bunch of history and cool people, right? If you like spending time outdoors, Chattanooga might seem like a great place to live, but it's not as peaceful as it looks. There's 180,000 people here in this city, way down near the Georgia border. Violent crime here is pretty bad. There were a bunch of murders and rapes here last year. And make sure you lock your cars when you're in Chattanooga because there were more than 1,300 car thefts here last year. Get this, stolen cars are more common here than in bigger cities like Memphis and Nashville. Folks here are trying to revitalize the downtown area. There's a great aquarium and some nice restaurants, but Chattanooga still has a very eerie and empty feeling. A lot of the streets are lined with trash, and there's a growing homeless problem here too. But if you're a homebody, this could be a place for you. Chattanooga calls itself Gig City, Claim and have the fastest internet service in the Western Hemisphere. Fastest internet? What? So enjoy hours of Netflix with no buffering, but just look outside the window every now and then to make sure your car's still there. At number nine, Dyersburg. It's located in Northwest Tennessee. It's about 80 miles from Memphis and right next to Arkansas, if that tells you anything. There's 16,000 people here. The city's motto is the gateway to everywhere, but unfortunately that means being the gateway to high crime rates. If you live in Dyersburg, you have a 1 in 12 chance of being robbed and a 1 in 64 chance of being the victim of a violent crime. The city has the 6th highest murder rate in the state. What? That gives you a whole new meaning to the name Dyersburg, doesn't it? On top of the crime, poverty is also an issue here. A quarter of the population struggling to make ends meet and nearly 10% of people here are jobless. Homes are the second cheapest in the state for a reason. You can get a home here for like a hundred grand and unfortunately, 17% of adults never graduated high school. Even if you put that all aside, there just isn't much to do in Dyersburg. And if that wasn't enough to worry about here, Dyersburg's proximity to the New Madrid seismic zone makes this city at risk for earthquakes. At number eight, we're heading back east to Newport, where there's only 6,800 people. From the 1920s through the 1960s, Newport was notorious throughout the southeast as a moonshine hotspot. And today, well, it's known for a lot more than moonshine. Newport's a struggling city. Nearly 43% of residents are living below the poverty line and just over 13% are jobless. This could be the result of education. 21% of adults never finished high school. Drugs are a growing issue here and so is the crime rate. In fact, Little Newport has the highest overall crime rate in Tennessee and it's more than three times higher than the national average. Little Newport, what is going on? Most of it's property crime. If you live in Newport, you have a one in 10 chance of having something stolen or burned. On average, one car is stolen per week. Just hope it's not yours. One perk to living here, they have the Newport Speedway. Tennessee people love them some car racing, but that's just about it in Newport. At number seven, McMinnville, located almost exactly halfway between Nashville and Chattanooga. McMinnville is home to 14,000 people and it's a nature lover's paradise. The city is known as the nursery capital of the world because it has 450 nurseries. There's no doubt McMinnville is a great place to grow a flower, but maybe not the best choice for growing a family. Just under a third of this town's residents are living in poverty, and there aren't many job opportunities here. And the schools are bad, and crime is way higher than the national average, and everybody here is gossipy. At least that's what they're telling me behind your back. That's not all. McMinnville has the highest divorce rate in the entire state. 16% of people over 15 years old are divorced. And that's more than double the state's divorce rate. 
I don't know why in the hell 15 year olds are getting married in the first place, especially in Tennessee. But if you're just passing through McMinnville, check out Cumberland Caverns, home to 32 miles of caverns. I guess that's pretty cool. At number six on our list, Rockwood, located north of Chattanooga, between the cities of Crossville and Knoxville. Rockwood is home to just 5,400 people, but it's a small town that needs a big change. About one in four residents lives below the poverty line, and most people are earning under 35k a year, and the home values are in the crapper. Rockwood has also been named as one of the worst cities in the state for women, with women earning only 49 cents for each dollar earned by a man. Come on now, people, pay the woman. The women. Heroin and meth have become a growing issue here, and the crime rate is more than 140% above the national average. What is happening in Rockwood? If you live here, you have a 1 in 18 chance of being the victim of a property crime, and that compares to a 1 in 47 chance nationally. So what are the positives to living in Rockwood? Well, the historic downtown area is actually really cute, and Watts Bar Lake offers really pretty views and access to water sports, and Megan Fox grew up here. So there's some hope for the children of Rockwood. At number five, we find La Follette, located about 40 miles north of Knoxville in the Cumberland Mountains, which are really pretty. They named this town after two brothers who founded a coal and iron company in the area in the early 19th century, which later failed. And that's pretty much the status of La Follette today. About a third of the 7,000 residents are living in poverty and a jaw-dropping 20% of people can't find jobs. People are struggling here in La Follette. The town has the worst home values in the state. We can get a place like this for about 50 grand and a quarter of adults never finished high school. Plus, like we've seen with some of the other cities on this list, drugs and crime are a huge issue too. The crime rate here is 137% above the national average. People living here have a 1 in 128 chance of being the victim of a violent crime each year. What? And get this, the mayor himself was even arrested in 2020 for official misconduct. Come on, mayor of La Follette. But La Follette was recognized as an official retirement destination in Tennessee. Yeah, that checks out. If you don't need a job or good schools and you want a cheap house in the mountains, I guess it's perfect. At number four on our list, Morristown. It's located in the northeast part of the state, about an hour outside of Knoxville. Morristown is home to about 30,000 people. The city is one of the largest manufacturing hubs in the state, with over 100 manufacturers making this place home. 100 people. So you think that would mean Morristown is flourishing with job opportunities and economic growth, but not so much. More than a quarter of this town still lives below the poverty line, and a lot of people here still don't work. And as a result, lots of people here are broke, and a lot of people don't have a real education. And don't be fooled by the beauty and nature of Morristown. The crime rate here is more than double the national average. People living here say the garbage litters the streets, and it's not safe for kids to play outside. Plus, you have to drive about an hour if you want something nicer than Walmart or fast food. But one thing Morristown does have is a rich history. There's even a museum dedicated to the tavern Davy Crockett once ran here. Davy! Davy Crockett! At number three, welcome to Ripley, where more people are out of work than anywhere else in this whole state. That's right, little Ripley, way out here on the western side of the state. Are we seeing a pattern here already? Most of the worst places are in the far western and far eastern sides of the state. In Ripley, one in eight people's without a job and families bring in only about 33k a year. That is just so sad. One in three families are living below the poverty line here, and home values are the fourth worst in the state. One in four adults never finished high school, and those who have have to leave the state to find a job with decent pay. Crime is also an issue in Ripley too. Check this out. You have a one in 66 chance of being raped, attacked, or murdered when you're in city limits. What the what the? And frankly, there's just not much to do here. There's no movie theater. There's no bowling alley. Honestly, the most excitement Ripley's seen in the past decade was when they won the Small Town Bright Lights Contest in 2020. And Maker's Mark came and put a big display of Christmas lights on the courthouse lawn. That's pretty much it in Ripley for fun. At number two on our list, Covington, home to about 9,000 people. Covington is just down the road from Ripley, and it shares a lot of the same issues. A lot of people are out of work, and they're broke, and the crime is super high. Over the course of a year, a car was stolen and a home was broken into more than once per week on average. That's pretty alarming for a city this small. What is going on in Covington? But the biggest concern in Covington is the bad schools. The public schools here are some of the least funded in the state. Kids have the 10th lowest spending levels in terms of per student ratios and teacher to student ratios, and it's having effects in the long term. 17% of adults here never finished high school, 
and only about 1 in 10 adults here ever goes to college. People living here say the town's congested, the roads are horrible, and there's been a recent influx of residents from Memphis moving north in search of cheaper housing. Whoa! You do not want that. And speaking of Memphis, the worst place to live in Tennessee is, of course, Memphis. Memphis is on another level when it comes to bad. Here's some stuff I said about Memphis a little bit ago. Memphis, Tennessee is our second most ghetto city. It's outright terrible for crime here. It's the third most violent city in the nation. And it also ranks fifth for number of property crimes per capita. North Memphis is particularly bad. Some have called it the most dangerous community in the nation. Graceland, on the city's south side, is sadly a really rundown area. Gangs are so bad in Memphis that there's a Wikipedia page about it. Is there hope for Memphis? Of course, motivated community members are always looking for change. Just recently, a community member discussed the crime and blight and the lack of youth opportunities here. It's going to take everybody in the community to make this work and get our communities back to neighborhoods where we know our neighbors and we know the kids in the neighborhood. That's how I grew up, and that's a place we need to get back to. So there you have it, the worst cities to live in Tennessee. These are all places in the state where crime is super high, where people are broke, and the education system sucks. And that's just too bad, because Tennessee's a great state. They need to clean some of these places up. Now, if you're looking for some of the best places to live in the volunteer state, it's going to be places like Germantown, Signal Mountain, Brentwood, Collierville, Franklin, Nolensville, Spring Hill. Basically, all the up-and-coming Nashville suburbs where all the rich people live and there's hardly any crime. So move there if you want a nice place to live. Because the places we just talked about are surely not desirable places to plant roots. And if you live in one of the nice areas, go out and celebrate with a big old plate of Tennessee barbecue and some banana pudding and crank up those Elvis tunes, folks. If you want to drink some whiskey, Tennessee. If you want to kiss your sister, Tennessee. If you want to see some mountains and some rednecks, you'll be counting Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. If you want to see a ghetto, Tennessee. If you want to hear some music, Tennessee! If you want to shoot some guns and drive a big old truck, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. If you want to make some moonshine, Tennessee. If you want to shoot a deer, Tennessee! If you want to hump your cousin and you don't care if they know it, Tennessee, Tennessee, Tennessee. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need make your community better because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.